Hello everyone, I'm doing a very quick update on uh, the YT Izzo, it's more of a long term review. Uh, I've actually got flat pedals on it because somebody else is going to test ride this thing today. But <clears throat> what I really wanted to hit on today is what I think is the single biggest free upgrade slash modification you can make to this bike. And uh, it's totally free. Totally free. Uh, what I did not know, and, and this is known on the YT Izzo pages, um, I didn't know for years though, this Fox Float DPS from the factory on the YT Izzo is spec'd with two volume spacers in the negative chamber. Now it has the 0.2 spacer stock in the positive chamber, which is down here. But I did not know, they, they put two spacers in this negative chamber, and the spacers are probably like somewhere around a sixth of an inch each. So more than a quarter inch of this small space is taken up. And I think YT did that to really increase pedaling efficiency right off the top. That's probably why it has such a stiff character. But the problem is where I live, the trails have a lot of roots. It's a lot of uh, erosion, <clears throat> a lot of golf ball to baseball size rocks, just loose uh, everywhere. And it, with that real stiff rear end, I mean, I was running like 30% sag with a 0.6 spacer to try to soften it up off the top while not bottoming out all the time. Well, I found out about these negative spacers and to, to get to them, you have to take this mounting hardware, the black out, but it's actually easy. I literally did it with my thumbs. I just pushed the pin inside and wiggled it back and forth till I got enough space to pull those spacers off. So that was actually very easy to do. Uh, didn't even require any tools to do it. Um, could literally, other than the five millimeter bolts you had to take out, you could do this entire thing with no tools. Um, so anyway, I took those negative spacers out. I put the 0 0.4 back in the positive down there uh, instead of the 0 0.6 because I knew I'd be adding air pressure. And to get basically the same sag I, I had before, I went from 170 PSI with the two negative spacers to 210 with no negative spacers. Uh, I might even go up to like 220 and give that a try. Well, it made the ride. This bike glided through the roots and the rocks so much better. I uh, A few days ago, I was running 24 rear PSI in my tire with and... I took those spacers out. I ran 27 PSI in that rear tire and it felt smoother than it did with three pounds less tire PSI just because the shock was working so much better. And that combined with when I had the whole can apart, you know, I cleaned everything, re-greased the seals, put some fresh uh, oil in the in there. So it's, it's running really well right now. So to me, uh, and I I'm back, I get better bottoming resistance because there's just more air in it to ramp up at the bottom, which is why I went back to a smaller spacer. All right, next thing real quick. <clears throat> this is the first time I've, I've had uh, probably three or four rides on these ground control tires. I've got the T7 front and rear. Uh, I was gonna go with the T5 rear, but the, uh, the T7 comes with a little extra layer of sidewall protection that the T5 does not. And I'm, you know, 195 pounds uh you know first thing in the morning so i really wanted a little extra protection and the extra grip uh it does make it more fun to ride now how do they ride well i have to say these tires are the least quirky tires ever i mean do they grip like a full-blown enduro tire or something like that no they don't but they're not made to uh but they're very consistent across the whole lean angle um for a more, I'd say this is somewhere, I hate to use the word down country, but I guess that's more of what it is. Um, they corner very well. They break very well. They're just, they don't do anything weird. You know, you don't really feel sketchy on them. Um, one thing I like a lot about these tires, and one of the big reasons I picked these, is they have a lots of knobbies everywhere. There is not much dead space. This is not a lot of dead spacing, especially through this area here. And on a lighter casing tire, for someone that weighs more, that's important. Uh, I'll show you by comparison. Okay, this tire here, this is a Vittoria Sierra. 
and the the knobbies are smaller much smaller here these are teeny tiny these are lower uh, but you can see all this is a lot more low tread with tons of dead space and i've punctured the sierra before which is why i quit running it on the rear because i couldn't trust it now does the ground control roll as fast as the sierra i don't think so um but it's not a huge difference and uh you know especially on the front it doesn't really matter and i was only running the sierra on the front uh anyway because of you know there's enough sharp pointy rocks where i live i kept puncturing it out back and to a lesser extent but similar this is a Maxxis uh, Ardent, and you can see, I mean, look at the massive gap here that's just, there's no knobby, and I have definitely punctured in this gap a few times before. I've got patches inside this thing, and I'm tired of it, and I think the ground control rolls just as fast as the Ardent anyway, which is what I was running out back, so all around, it's a, it's a more fun tire. It rolls plenty fast enough. When you get on rough terrain, you know, you're not going to notice that rolling resistance as much anyway because your tire's bouncing through gaps and rocks and things like that. Uh, it's not just having a nice solid patch on the ground, you know. If we are racing on gravel or pavement, it would make a much bigger difference. So anyway, uh, so far so good. I'm planning on running these ground controls in October at the BT Epic. It's a 52 and a half mile race. And... Uh, yeah, I actually might be selling this bike, uh, not because I don't like it, but just because I've I've got something cooking with a, a brand that my local bike shop carries and some other things. Um, but this has been wonderful, and I'm a little sad that if I do get rid of it now that I figured out this shock trick, because it feels like a different bike. Uh, it still pedals extremely well. I don't feel like I'm giving up anything, uh, except maybe on a smooth road, in which case just flip the the lock switch and the thing locks out so no different there but as far as a comfortable ride absorbing all the little chatter and that sort of stuff it's so much better now so much better and it you know you fight to build speed with your legs but if your shock is harsh every time you hit little bumps it slows you down because the the rear tire is it's bouncing back uh, as it hits the rocks because it won't move up and get out of the way and it just chatters and it you lose speed so i think with a with a plusher setup you can maintain the speed that you've worked for and carry it a lot easier you can go around corners faster um, so i think that is the single biggest uh free upgrade you can do to this bike by far thanks for watching